Hi everybody, well it's uh, Michael again. Um, just doing another update video on Tiawin, my water dragon, and this for another update on my other reptiles as well. Um, anyways, um, pretty much going to show you how I do take care of my water dragon and how I take care of my leopard gecko and my ball pythons. Um, anyways, let's get started on Tiawin here. So basically, yeah, we see him right here in the corner. He's hanging out on top of a log. Uh, no, it's not his log, it's actually his vine. He's in here. One of the main things I've added in here is I've added the Zoomed's Reptifogger into his cage. I've had that for a while. I bought that the day I bought him. You know, just to make sure that he would be absolutely comfortable in his cage. Anyways, you if you own one of these things, you need one of these to keep the humidity levels up. If you're somebody like me who doesn't like that to spray down the cage all the time. I do occasionally spray down the cage with uh, a sprayer that I have right here, which is an Exoterra Mister. I will spray them down occasionally in there when I want, when the humidity levels are not optimal. And the fogger is not doing as good of a job as I as I, want, as I needed to do for the day. Sometimes it's drier in my room than usual. Today it seems to be a little bit more <coughs> moist, a little bit more moisture in the air in my room, so the fogger is doing just fine. And occasionally, if I don't feel like spraying down, I just up the volume of fog that goes into the cage. And that brings it right up. The waterfall, I'm going to have to do another cleaning of that. It's still going pretty good. I moved the bromeliad from the back corner over there to the front. Um, anyways, the other thing I've added, I know it's going to look kind of gross, uh, but the crickets have been getting into it, and I think so is he, and all that. But I did have some fruits and a vegetable thing, which I'm going to have to change out pretty soon. Right now, actually, I'm probably going to change that out, put some fresh stuff in there for them. But I added some uh, lettuce and some blueberries to make kind of like a fruit salad for him. I also added a extra calcium dish in case he decides he wants to lick the calcium up. Um, I added a few new things to it in here as well. Uh, I took some plants. I took some uh, stuff from my snake cage and sprayed it all down and added it to the cage. One of the main things I added was the back was that was this big log right here that his vine is currently sitting on. That that came from my snake cage um, is because the berry's getting bigger. So I'm trying to open up some more space for her and all that because she's getting way too big. Anyways. Um <clears throat> The other thing I added over here is this log that's this is other branches sticking out to the back over here. That right here as you can see it. This that's another thing I added from her cage. And once again, like I said, I always spray down and rinse everything out before I put it in the reptile's cage and all that. I make sure that I use my Zoomids <coughs> wipe away chemical, which I don't know where it is right now, but it's somewhere in here. I might not check my drawers. Um, the other thing I do add is I do use the Reptivite. This is the Reptivite. This is, her, this is both my reptiles, uh, both my water dragon and my leopard geckos multivitamins right here. It's really good for them. The in fact, the funny thing is, is I keep looking at this stuff, and it's like half the stuff that we could use, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to try it. It's made for reptiles. I'm not stupid. There's some stuff in there that probably would harm me, but there is some stuff in there that I would look at and go, wow, these guys are actually better than we do. <laughs> Anyways, the crickets, most of the crickets I eat, I need to get some more of this. I just ran out. I feed my crickets this orange flukers cube. Uh, for their food, this is for cricket food. I need to get some more. I also use this for their calcium. Something lands, the Reptivite, plus this mixed together to make the multivitamin that I feed them. Um, anyways, <coughs> see if I can find what I use. My crickets, I'm starting to run low on those. I feed them all the time. This is, I don't know if there's any in there at the moment. Probably not. Probably not right now at the moment. The um, main thing I've been feeding now lately is some of these uh, super worms. Last night my leopard gecko Ayashe, she, which we're going to check out right now, she actually went for hard bore, full bore on, these leopard, on the uh, crickets. And I think she's 
actually in here right now. As you see, I do, I gotta clean her, her poop out. She just took that last night while I was asleep. So yeah, I gotta take that out. But anyways, there she is. She's sleeping, being all pretty, and all that. For those of you who don't know what morph she is, she is a Max Snow Leopard Gecko. I don't know why this thing went out of focus on me. But anyways, we're back to, here we go, back to focus. Um, anyways... Yeah, she's a Max Snow Leopard Gecko. I got her when she was a juvenile. And now you can see, and she was really little at the time when she was a juvenile. Now, as you can see, how quickly she's grown. She's gotten really big and fat, and her tail's all nice and fat, too. And she's really cute, and I love her, and I just love her to death. Alright. I do always fill her water dish up when it starts emptying out. And then it's a little low right now, I may add some more water into it. Um, but pretty much I take care, I really take care of all my animals. When I do change her tank out, and all that, I am planning on adding a lot more of the, of the clay substrate and starting to uh, starting a little bit less of the sand. As you can see, when I first few, few videos I had, I had nothing but sand. Then the second video I did of her, it was this, plus a little bit, plus a big old pile of sand in the, in the corner. I've since then lowered that pile of sand, took that all out, um, added the whole new clay substrate, and it's slowly starting to take over the tank. So, yeah. We're good on that, as far as I'm concerned. I am no longer going to be using sand in her stuff. I'm going to be using just the humid hide. I'm just going to be using the clay substrate now, from now on. Finding out that you can't ingest it, so that's a good thing. Uh, as far as Zuberi is concerned, we go over here now to Zuberi's tank. Which I'm going to kill the lights real fast because it's a lot better for me to view for you guys to take a look and see how my tank is lit up. Anyways, Zuberi the ball python. <coughs> she just recently had a shed, so I'm not going to handle her right now. Because um, I'm worried that if I do handle her, she's going to freak out a little bit. Because come on, you think about it, you're a reptile. You're a snake, you just shed. Your skin's all sensitive. You don't want to be touched. You wouldn't want to be touched either. So, think of it as having a reptile version of a sunburn. Kind of. You know how when we get our sunburn and our skin starts peeling off and the new skin underneath is really sensitive, we don't want to be touched? Yeah, that's how she feels right now. So, anyways, as you can see, I used, like I said, I used to have that big old log thing in the, that would sit right there in front of this other big log thing. Um, so like I said, I'm slowly starting to empty your cage out of too much uh, plants due to the fact that I need to make sure I know where she's at at all times because a lot of people who own snakes have been telling me they don't don't put too much stuff into their cage because yeah, it makes it look pretty and all but you need to know where that snake's head is at all times because if you don't, you might reach for it, scare the heck out of her and she may actually bite you. Now the way now what I do use for her heat is I use a heat pad underneath her tank. I do keep her her environment a little bit moist, a lot moister, a little bit more moist. Once again, I use Reptifogger for her tank as well. So I got two Reptifoggers in here. The current temperature is 81.1 degrees in there. That is more than perfect for her for this time of year. The other thing I like to use. The other thing I do use is I use Eco Earth a lot for for both of my tropical animals. My water dragon has Eco Earth. My snake has Eco Earth. Um, one the other, uh, a lot of things are different. So slowly but surely, I'm taking it out. The her moisture levels are always remained at 70 to 50, 50 to 70 percent. Mainly 60 percent is in between, which is a good thing to have. Which is Pretty much where this has been staying is at 60%. The I had I have a bromeliad in there. I had I put another log in there for her to crawl up on when she wants to. Uh, the vine will normally go across. Is going across. Um, there's a lot of different things in here. I give her a lot of places to hide so that she isn't freaking out all the time. I don't want a tank that's so empty that she feels vulnerable. So yeah. That's pretty much what I do for her. The other the heat for heating, for another thing for heating at night, I have a Zoomed's Moonlight Bulb, which is in this thing right here, which is that purple light you see in there. 
that's my nightlight for the view here while she's out and about doing her things. Uh, this right here is just a regular daytime bulb that I put in there. It's just an incandescent bulb. That's all there is in there. It's just a regular incandescent bulb. Basically, that really dim light or on this camera it'll probably look really bright. But if you were here in person, it'd be actually a little bit dimmer. I don't know that. Same thing goes for how I take care of her. This is just a regular incandescent bulb for a daylight bulb. Won't bother her or anything, so it's not gonna. Because so she's not even out when the things are on, anyways. She's actually then I once again another moonlight bulb for her viewing. Um, right here for her because she's a daytime lizard needs the UVB. I use a UVB light, which is a hundred. I think it's a hundred watt UVB bulb. Uh, this over here is another um, hundred watt. Uh, nighttime UVA bulb that's for extra heat because it's right now it's winter time where I'm at so um, it's going to be yeah so UVB her nighttime light which will be turning off slow his or her nighttime light anyways will be slowly turning off um, her other her other thing over here is a hundred is a is her hundred watt is the hundred watt uh, basking bulb and all that don't it a lot of people are saying, oh, 150, 100 watts are too much for these animals. Actually, for when it comes to these animals, you want a 95 degree basking area. You don't want anything below that. If you don't keep it below, if you keep them at below 95, they go into kind of something like a, a brumation thing, and that's not what you want. These animals, being that they're tropical animals, don't normally have a brumation period because they live in the jungle. So all those people who have been, all those videos you've been seeing on the internet where you guys are like, oh, I'm going to put them in the brumation. Not a good idea with these animals because they really don't have one. The snake doesn't have one and the, and the water dragon wouldn't have one either because they're both tropical animals. It's always warm there all the time. So they would never go into a brumation and all that. The leopard gecko in their head. They will go into brumation if it gets too cold in their tank because they're from the desert. They're from Afghanistan. From the, from the Afghanistan mountainous areas in Afghanistan and Iran, Pakistan area they they live in these high deserts and if you've never looked at Afghanistan in the wintertime there's snow on the mountains there's snow down the valleys in Pakistan and all that so it gets cold up there so in those areas so you they're gonna have a hibernation period however if you're an owner like me when you own one of them you don't have to have them on a hibernation status. They don't really need it. Their wild cousins have it, but these guys really don't need it because they do sleep during the daytime all, anyways, all day, all night. So keeping them keeping them warm all the time isn't really going to hurt them that much. Um, but as far as this is concerned, still got his reptile hammock up. And so, that's pretty much how I take care of my animals. I do feed my snake a small rat once every two weeks due to her size anyways but anyways yeah so that's my reptile care video of how to take care of them when you want to set these guys up you make sure that you have them set up right alright you gotta make sure do your research on these animals before you buy them always make sure you do your research on your pet before you buy them I always do my research on all my animals before I buy them I did a lot of research on my leopard cat before I bought her I did my research on my ball python when I bought her as well even after I bought her I did a lot of research to make sure that I was doing everything right when I bought this guy I've been now watching a lot of videos about people who own these these water dragons and they're really awesome and finding out that once you get them set up right they're really really easy to take care of for an intermediate lizard anyways and he is just gonna come down here right now wherever he's at he's crawling around in here right now there he is Okay, look, look at that face. You cannot get mad at that face. No. Okay. Well, anyways, that's my care video. Uh, reptile care video. So, once again, this is Michael Davis, MCD Reptiles. Check it out. Peace.